who should watch this video well anybody can watch this video whether you are a java developer or you don't know java it doesn't matter because in this video i would just let you know how to build a spring boot application and how easy it is to build restful api using spring boot hey this is ramanuj and welcome to the episode 1 of our microservice series well in order to build microservices first thing that we need to know how to build an application typically how to build restful web services so in order to build restful web services definitely you should know some language or framework so in this series of tutorials i'm going to use spring framework for building our restful web services in this video i would just let you know how to build a spring boot application and how easy it is to build restful api using spring boot no matter whatever languages you know or don't know you can watch this video so let's get started the first thing that comes in our mind is what is spring well spring is a framework typically a java framework just like we have other frameworks like django for python express for javascript and so on so what exactly we can do using spring framework or spring boot spring boot is a project that comes under spring framework for building restful web services let's explore here so this is the official website of spring boot and where you will get a lot of things a lot of information what is spring what exactly it does so i'm not going with the theories right now i'm not going to explain what spring does and what are the benefit advantages disadvantages and so on so what we are going to do we are going to build a very simple spring boot application so in order to build a spring boot application obviously we need an id you can choose any id that you prefer whether it is IntelliJ IDEA, whether it is Eclipse, whether it is Visual Studio Code, you can choose anything. You have the flexibility. However, I personally prefer IntelliJ IDEA for my Java project or Spring Boot project. So I would be using IntelliJ IDEA, which is right now, right over here. This is the IntelliJ IDEA ID. And this is the ultimate version of the IntelliJ IDEA. So for the first time when you are downloading for, for first month, you will get it for free. Uh, Otherwise, you can go for the community edition. Of course, community edition doesn't come with a lot of features. You can still use it. So let's create a new project. So when you are using IntelliJ IDEA, if you click on this new project option, you would get all these options here. So you can create a Spring Boot application directly from IntelliJ IDEA. However, if you are using the community edition, you won't get the option to create a Spring Boot application directly from the ID. So what you can do, I'm closing it right now. So what you can do, if you are using any other ID other than IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate, maybe Visual Studio Code or Eclipse, in that case, what you need to do, go to the official website of Spring and there is an option called Spring Initializer or you can directly type start.spring.io start.spring.io so here you would see a gui from where you can create your application the first thing that you select is the project type whether it is a maven gradle or anything else right so we are choosing maven so what let me tell you maven is a build tool and the project structure would be of maven nature we can choose other as well but maven is as of now it is popular and we are going to choose maven next is you are going to choose the language of course we are going to choose java over here we have other options like kotlin and groovy now again if you don't know java no problem i am not going to get into a lot of java code right now and then you have to choose the spring boot version so currently when i'm recording this video the latest version of spring boot is 3.4.4 and i'm choosing that latest version and all the other versions you can see these are pre-released versions so let's give a group name so what is a group name basically whenever you are building a project typically a java project maven project every project comes with a group name so consider you are building a lot of project for different clients or for different purposes so every application should belonging to a specific group so usually the group names are inverse of the domain like if you hold a domain like rds.com uh, then you would write com.rds rds now rds has nothing special here it's my initials that i'm writing and then com.rds dot you can write app or spring app or anything so i'm just giving some group name and artifact name is your project name so let's give the artifact name as my first spring app. that's all right so my first spring app 
and then the description you can change the description let it be and then the package name over here right so i would be changing it right this doesn't seems very convenient so com.rds.app and then you can give any name spring app right again it is your choice i'm writing it like this you can choose any other name as well and then the packaging so there are two ways of packaging your application one is the jar one is the war for time being i'm going to select jar and later on i'll create a video wherein i'll explain the difference between jar and one for the time being you can choose jar which stands for java archive and war which stands which stands for web archive next the java version that you need to select as of now when i'm recording this video java lts or long term release version is java 21 and i'm selecting java 21 you can choose 17 or 24 as well it will work next is adding the dependencies now what is the dependency dependencies means in external libraries that you need to have in your project so it is a spring boot application and along with your java runtime you need some spring libraries or spring specified you know functionalities for that i need to add certain dependencies so I would click on dependencies and I would search for web. This is the only dependencies right now we need spring web. Choose this spring web. What is this? So it is used for building restful application and it comes with a by default. It comes with a Tomcat embedded server. That's all. And I'm going to generate the project. So this is something like if you have ever worked on a node application or any JavaScript specific application, right? React or Angular, you know how you know, we add a lot of uh, node modules or external dependencies on our package.json file and exactly the same thing that we are doing over here. So let's click on the generate button and it will download a file, right? You see it has downloaded a my first spring app zip file. So what I need to do, I have to go to this, I have to open the file folder, which is already opened and you can see you will get this my first spring app zip file. So I would extract this file and I would get this folder over here. Now I can open this directly from IntelliJ IDEA, but what I'll do, I would download is not a right folder to put this application. So I'm going to keep this application on my specified folder, which I've created for this series of tutorials, which is called spring boot series. And I would be pasting it over here. That's all. Now what I'm going to do, I would be going to my IntelliJ IDEA and I would be opening. So you can open this, you will get this open option and I'll go to the respective folder, which is Spring Boot series. And over here, I would open this application. Let's open that. So the moment I open this, you would be able to see certain files and folders. Now, again, I'm not going to explain any of the files and folders right now, later on, I would explain everything and now what we are going to do we are going to as in an, any application that you create what type of language what type of framework you use there is a folder called srcn which is a very common to us so here in a spring boot application also you will get a folder called src which is our source code we are going to expand this and again this is divided into two part main and test test is specifically for writing unit test cases we'll ignore this folder right now and we are going to expand this main folder under this main folder. Again, there are two folders. So I would be expanding the Java folder. Now, when you expand this Java folder, you will see a package and there is a file, my first spring boot application. Let's open this. Now you would be able to see some Java code. Again, I'm not going to explain that code, but you would be able to see some Java code. Now, right now I can run this application, but if I run this application, nothing is going to happen because I don't have anything to show. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a simple API so that whenever I run this application, I should be able to access the API. How do you create this API? For that, I'm going to create a simple package. Let's create a new package. Just right click here and you'll get this new option, select package. So give a name to this package called API. Again, it's an arbitrary name. You can give anything. So let's give this name as API and under this API package, we are going to create a Java class. So let's give a name my first api done let's create that and yes we have created this my first api there's a class and on top of this class i'm going to annotate this with an annotation at rest controller so what is that at rest controller this is a spring specified annotation you 
can see that it's coming from org.springframework.webbind annotation rest controller. So this is a spring specified annotation which is used to annotate a class or which is used to specify a class that it is going to return some restful endpoints or it is going to have some restful endpoints. We'll explain everything elaborately in some other videos. For time being, we are just going to create a simple API. So in order to create an API, let's first of all, let's create a function public. Let's return a string. Say hello. Done. And let's just return a simple string return. Hello from spring boot done. We're done. Now I need to say that whenever somebody is making a get API request to my web server, it should return hello from spring boot. How do you tell it? So in order to tell this, I have to write one more annotation at get mapping. So that's all. And I would assign it to a pattern as well. Slash hello. So whenever somebody is making a get request, now there are different types of requests, get, put, post, you know, delete and so on. But right now we are creating a simple get request wherein somebody is hitting this slash hello and it's going to return hello from Spring Boot. That's all. Let's save this and run this application. How do you run this application? So in order to run this application again, you have to open this my first Spring application. This is the file wherein we have this main method. So you can click on this run button or you can just right click and run this. So I'm going to run this. And the moment you run this, let's expand this. Now you'd be able to see a Spring logo with the version information. And there is a very important information over here. Tomcat has started. You can see this line Tomcat started on port 8080. So this is the port on which your Tomcat server will run. Of course, we can change the port, but right now by default, it starts on 8080. So let's explode this. So we are going to go to our browser and let's type localhost 8080 slash hello. So the moment we do this, you would be able to see that you are getting hello from Spring Boot. So you have created your first API or first REST endpoints using Spring Boot. Now, of course, we are not going to return a string from an API. Most probably we return some JSON. How do you return some JSON? Let's have a look on that as well. So I would be coming over here in order to get your response as JSON. What you need to do, you have to return an object. So I would return. First of all, I would create a new package here that will hold the structure of my data. So I would give a name called DTO, which stands for data transfer object. You can give any other name, but that's a standard name that we use and wherein we are going to create a model or create a simple class, create a simple Java class. So we are going to give a name called person and let's choose record here so that record is a new feature in Java and we don't need to create setter, getters and constructor and all the other stuff when we are using record. So we'll talk about record in some other videos, but for time being, we'll just create a record and in record things are very simple. We'll what a person should have maybe a name. So string name and what else uh, maybe is age. Age done. Okay. So we have created this, just saved it and I would go back to my first API and I would create one more get mapping. And this time it is slash person done. And here I'm going to return a person public po person. And let's return get person done. And let's return a new person, new person, give a name, maybe my name. And of course, I don't want to reveal my age. You can guess it. Let's put something, some random age. Okay, that's cool. And let's relaunch this application. How do you relaunch? You can see the relaunch button here, or you can also relaunch from here. So let's restart the application. 
and you would be able to see that the application has been restarted and I would go back to my browser and rather than writing hello I would write person here hit enter and what you get is a JSON value right so you see name uh, is my name and age is some random age so you would be able to see what you are getting in return is JSON okay you might not get in like this like formatted for that I have another plugin on my you know on my browser so you might get it like this so anything is fine but you would get some JSON value as written so yes that's how we create an API so in this video uh, what I have covered is how to build a simple Spring Boot application or how easy it is to build a restful API using Spring Boot of course in a real-time application we need to know a lot of things behind us in what is happening with the rest controller annotation or get mapping annotation and we have to connect with the database we have to implement security lots of stuffs are there but this is how we built us application using Spring Boot it is so simple and easy you don't need to write any configuration you don't need to configure literally anything you don't need to create a virtual environment and so on so building restful APIs using Spring Boot is very simple and easy. We'll explore more from the next video onwards. Thank you so much for watching.